We are Andrew and Leanne, and we are about to set off on our most ambitious adventure yet and walk over 230 kilometers through the Himalayas over the next 25 days. Our journey will take us from the small village of Duske in Okaldunga all the way to Everest Base Camp at an altitude of 5,364 meters. Our journey will finish with a flight back to Kathmandu from Tenzing Kalari Airport, the most dangerous airport in the world. The adventure starts very early from our hotel here in Kathmandu. One thing I wanted to do really quick before we set off, I just want to weigh myself and see how much I am before and after the hike. Here it goes. Seventy-seven and a half kilos. So my goal is to lose as much as possible during the hike. Let's see if that happens. It is currently 4.30 a.m. and we have just finished packing what we need to take with us on the, the 21 day trek and what we need to leave here in the hotel. So this is what we are leaving behind. And then these two bags here, these two bags are what we are taking with us for 21 days. Doesn't look like a lot, but mine weighs just over 10 kilos. Uh, we haven't yet weighed Leanne's, so we'll see. I'm just gonna go and take all of our baggage downstairs so they can store it for the next 21 days. everybody we have just made our first pit stop for breakfast we're about how many hours in three about three hours into our seven or eight or nine hour trip this is ram our wonderful guy yeah we are going to mount so we're gonna be the first day stop for the breakfast just a local places very close to river bank yes lots of local places lots of local food lots of local culture super excited well, breakfast was delicious, but now it's time to jump back into the van and head further down the road. So this is stop number two. We're just going to have a little bit to eat, not too much, maybe a cup of tea. Wash the face, wash the hands. It's getting a bit warm now, actually. It's a lot warmer than I thought it would be, but I suppose we haven't actually climbed an elevation at all, so... So we've just arrived here in Okael Dunga with our guide Ram. We've only been here a few minutes and we've already eaten momos and now we're going to do a little bit of walking just to see some of the sights in the area. Good morning from a very cold Okeldunga. We slept in this room behind us for one night before starting our seven hour trip across the hills to our next location. I'm so sorry if I looked terrible. Um, it was an interesting night. <laughs> Come in, let's have a look. So it's very basic, but it was very, very cheap. We have a bed which was probably the hardest thing I've ever slept on, but it actually wasn't that bad. I'm not gonna do a bed test because I think it would split in half, but we did get an extra blanket last night, which was like this thick. If you come over here, we have a space. <laughs> and a nice view of part of the town. <laughs> we have some clothes hooks, which was actually very useful for all the jackets and things. And then we have a bathroom, sitting toilet. One of the other rooms actually had a squatty potty, so this one was preferred. A working shower, a bucket of water. The toilet doesn't flush, 
So you have to fill the bucket with water and then take the jug and pour it down the toilet. This place was £9 a night. £9. I mean, I don't think I've ever stayed anywhere for £9 a night. Even some campsites in the UK aren't £9 a night. So that's really good that we got our own private room. The door locks as well. So yeah, now it's time for breakfast and our seven hour walk. So the place we're staying also has its own little restaurant. This place is super cute. They sell like loads of beer. They sell really good momos. They sell dal bat, and they also sell like chow mein. And this morning apparently Ram has ordered us toast with eggs and fried potatoes because we need the energy. <laughs> Breakfast was delicious. We've just paid up and now we need to grab our bags and get ready to leave. So that's it. These are our first steps on our 20 day long trek from Okaltunga to Everest Base Camp. Hopefully we, uh, we make it and our legs don't give out. But this scenery is so, so nice. Have a look. Super pretty. Namaste. Namaste, man. We've just stopped by the village of Duske on our way through to Sepli for today. And uh, beautiful little village. It's so colorful. All the, all the buildings are made with what looks like, like it's almost like terracotta clay, like painted blue on top. Over off in the distance, just about, yeah, just about here. There's a little tiny peak and uh, we're heading up and over that and apparently there is a small village on the other side so that's where we're heading next if you're interested the word for beautiful here in nepal or for beautiful scenery is ramracha so we've just stopped here for a quick break um, i genuinely don't know how far in we are andrew took a bit of a tumble before it was quite funny we were walking along the stream and uh, there was what looked like a patch of rocks just to my left and I put my foot down on it and it turns out it was a load of twigs and branches and there was nothing underneath it at all. <laughs> so my foot went straight through. Luckily I had good footing with the other foot and it didn't fall over. It's all right. This is a local old cow mm -hmm. that's met by a millet. Yeah. This is a cow is a rock she. Wow. They already make it. Maybe they are now over there. Mm -hmm. You wanna try it? We can do it. Like a kind of board car, no? Just try a little bit. I'll try. Yeah. It's, it's still it's still hard that one. Yeah. It's just a fresh. <laughs> Gonna try some homemade vodka. <laughs> See what it's like. Probably blow my head off. But this here, this is apparently animal feed they are cooking. So we've been invited into this lovely lady's home for some tea, and uh, I've also been given a taste of what was this called? Uh, millet one. Millet vodka. Like. <laughs> oh, it smells quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. You can try. It. <laughs> that is strong. Hmm. Me too, chat. Me too, chat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's really good. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah strong. Yeah. Strong. It tastes like tastes like vodka, but warm. I've never had it warm before. Be because they, just to make it now. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. One. Now it's getting cooler. Yeah. Mm. Ow. Do you want to taste? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Mito cha. Mito cha. Yeah, so nice. So this is called Rokshi, the um, the vodka that's made. Really delicious. Really strong. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that dude. Mm. Mm. It's really nice, spicy. Mm. Mito cha. Mito cha. No. Mm. A little spicy, oh, yeah. mm. but really good. That was so special. In England, people just never invite you into their home like that. We were invited in, um, we had tea, we had homemade vodka, we had potatoes with chili sauce. Absolutely amazing experience. And um, we're just so happy that we came across them. 
Another interesting little fact, all of these paths that we've been walking on today are actually the paths that the farmers take to carry all of their grains and goods from town to town. We've seen a couple of people carrying them uh, on their backs and they carry maybe 40 or 50 kilos just basically strapped on their forehead and they have it over their backs. So strong. I can't imagine carrying 40 kilograms in this heat on these paths up these hills. I mean, my bag weighs 10 kilos and that's enough for me. Such strong people here in Nepal. So we've nearly finished for the day. Yeah, our final resting stop for the day is one of these houses here. We're not sure which one yet, but uh, Ram says it should take about another hour or so and we'll be there. Mm. So cold, so refreshing. Mountain water. We have finally made it. This is Sepli. We have climbed 150 meters in elevation and made it 16 kilometers today. There are goats blocking our path. And while I'm here, guys, I will take you for a quick toilet tour. This is our toilet. First time in my life I've used an outhouse, but let's have a look. Very basic. We have a squatty potty and a bucket to flush the top. And this is where I turn it off because you're not seeing the rest. So we've stopped for lunch, we've checked into our room and thrown our bags on the beds and now we're just going to go and visit a waterfall which is just down here in the valley. The water is absolutely freezing. It was really nice and refreshing after, uh, after the hike today, but I definitely couldn't stay in for long. It was so, so, so cold. Really interestingly, there's a group of guys here building a dam. So they're channeling the fish into a smaller section so that they can catch them. Okay, so the way that they've been catching these fish is they initially made two dams, one up top, one up bottom. Then they piled up a load of leaves just below one of the dams, the top dam, and pounded it with sticks, then started pouring water over the top and some kind of poison basically flows into the water and uh, it seems to kind of stun and blind the fish and then people are just picking them out by hand and I got one. <laughs> Hello. Hello and namaste. So end of day one. Today actually felt a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. He said six hours and it did feel quite physically tough. Not sure what I was expecting, but it was a lot more physical than I thought. I actually feel really strong. Um, although, as I say, it, it, it felt longer. It felt comfortable. I didn't feel like I was struggling too much. My feet are super blistered, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, that is to be expected. Some of the highlights from today were definitely staying with the families. You know, the local experiences, we got to see something I think that not many people get to see. The biggest highlight of the day for me personally was the fact that we got invited into a small local home and we got to try their homemade vodka, which is something I've never tried before, something I didn't expect to do. Another real highlight is the food. The food is so great and uh, yeah, just the local experience. Like, uh, they be worried about uh, my clients, they can walk or not, then uh, my clients say, oh, they're so happy to walk me down. That's why I feel like, oh, this is the best. Yeah, let's see what day two brings. See if I'm as, as chip and chirper tomorrow once I've finished, well, finished the second day. Good morning again from a little village up in the hills. 
Uh, welcome to the room tour. Uh, sorry if I look absolutely awful. I've not had a proper shower in two days. Um, this is our room. It's two beds and a door and a window. <laughs> you know, nice and basic. Super cheap, we think. We actually don't know how much this place is yet, but um, when we find out, we'll put it down below. We do have a lovely window out there to the farm and a door out here that leads to some other rooms. Also with our room, get a guard chicken. So we also have like a communal dining area, which is where we're going to have breakfast now. Uh, but before we do that, look at these views. Absolutely beautiful place to wake up. So we've come through in here now. This is where we're having breakfast. Morning. Morning. This is where we have breakfast. Nice fire. Nice fire. Morning. And uh, just through here is where we all sit and eat. They really make, um, make use of all the space. So it doubles up as like a dining area and beds. So this is where the family who own the place sleep. Uh, and then they kind of like turn it into a dining area for the guests. Um, we're just gonna go sit by the fire, drink some tea, and then have breakfast. See you in a bit. So the lady has just brought us our noodle soup, which has got egg, vegetables, curry, noodles. Um, it smells absolutely amazing, and it's gonna give us the energy to get up that hill. We've also got this special bread here. Um, Andrew will explain how they make it. So this bread, they actually make with rice flour. So they grow the rice themselves here in the hills and then they will bring it back up to like, the yard in the center of this place and they'll put it into giant, like a giant pestle and mortar and it will take them about an hour to grind it down to a flour which they will then mix with water and deep fry and this is what they get. And it's delicious. <laughs> now it's time to head to the John before, uh, before we go to climb this. We have to climb this today. So we're going to try and do that before the sun comes up. Down the back, maybe. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it. We're off again. I think today is a five-hour walk. And what is the name of the town we are going to today, Ram? Moidani. Moidani. Yeah, it's about five hours. It takes about three hours to get to the top of this, this ridge. And then apparently it takes about two hours to get back down to what is actually Ram's hometown. waterfall in this area called Sefli Waterfall. From the bottom to the top is actually 100 meters and you can just hear how powerful it is. Usually in the monsoon season this is massive but at the moment it's the dry season and there's still this much water coming from it. We stopped off at the waterfall, filled our water bottles back up and now we have to climb these rocks. level ground for a bit. We've made it um, up the majority of the climb today I think and now we finally got a nice bit of, of a gentle gentle climb to the top of this peak. So I think that's the hardest part of today's hike done. It should be mainly level and then downhill once we reach the top. But yeah so far feeling good. Not too sore. Not sure how Leanne's feeling. that answered that. We made it to the top in about three hours. It was quite an incline and from here it's mainly downhill to Ram's village. About two hours slow walk and Ram's family are gonna make us some food when we arrive. Rehydrate, start again. <laughs> and once again not sure if you can see it but this is the village we stayed in last night. <sighs> so yeah We've come quite a distance already. Oh. 
So we've just been told we can come inside this, this house here for some more tea. A nice welcome stop after three hours of hiking uphill. This is one of the traditional Nepalese houses and they just invite you in here for tea. Everything's like made of wood and pots and pans everywhere and everything's filled with like soot from the fire. But uh, they still have a TV. <laughs> Ram was saying that the villages on this side of the valley have electricity. Um, once we get onto the other side of the valley, the houses don't have electricity. So it'd be interesting to see that as well. Sorry, we completely forgot to, uh, to film the tea. It's delicious. It was salted milk tea. Really nice. Slightly sweet, slightly salty. Really creamy, absolutely delicious. And now we're back on the road. Watch, Watch my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay. Such a lovely family. Honestly, it's so special to meet families like that and to be welcomed into the home and just have like a cup of tea. Really, really nice. Probably, probably my favorite part of Nepal so far is just going to people's houses and having tea. <laughs> <laughs> little white flowers. They're wild strawberries. So cute. Andrew, watch your neck. Really? Be careful. Okay. Be careful. Oh. Careful, careful, careful. Woo! <laughs> weighed so much. I have no idea how these ladies carry this. It, it was so heavy. How? I feel like a little yeah. bit like it. You are so strong. So strong, yeah. Seriously have no idea how those ladies carry those baskets. And apparently they've carried them for an hour and a half today already. Absolute madness. I couldn't even pick it up. <laughs> yeah, every two days they have to make the same journey. So it's about an hour and a half each way. Ah, absolutely blown my mind. I, I cannot believe that, that they are able to carry that. So strong, so, so strong. Yeah, I would like to, so the way I was born, see the, over there in the middle, blue robes. That's the, my parents' house. I was born, then I was growing up over there. We're gonna stay two nights over there, okay? okay. So these are Ram's parents working here in the fields. And this is the home. They spend six months here and then six months over the other side of the valley. Namaste, Amma. Okay, I'm ready to go for the mashed potato. So, I've just been offered chang. Yesterday, you saw us drink the rokshi. So, they then take this, the chang, and distill it, and that becomes rokshi. This is slightly less strong than the rokshi, but it's nice. And I've been given a full cup, so. <laughs> it's nice, meet the chat. So, we have just had the most amazing meal with Ram's family. We had like um, a potato soup. So, they got mashed potatoes, uh, made a soup with eggs, spices and herbs and then they kind of uh, put like mashed potato balls into the soup it was delicious i need to make that back at home but yeah really really interesting probably one of my favorite things i've eaten so far here in nepal ram is just uh, letting us try a, a vegetable we've never tried before in our lives he said it's called a ground apple uh, i thought it was a sweet potato but it's not it is a different color and he said you can eat it raw as well so i'm quite intrigued uh, as i say something i've never tried and uh, we're gonna give it a wash and give it a go Here it goes. Doesn't smell like much. Wow. Oh, that is so good. Mm. That is delicious. Meat chat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Why do we not grow these in England? <laughs> I have never seen this. No? no? Never. Yeah, completely different to a sweet potato. Looks very similar, mm. but it's so juicy. Really, really juicy, quite sweet. Not, not overly sweet. It tastes very similar to an apple. It's like a cross between apple and sugar cane. 
I thought it would be tough, like a potato. It's not like a potato. No. Mm. Ground apple. Not too sweet. So, day two of the hike complete. Confession cam day two. Namaste. After day two trek, we arrived to my hometown. Uh, feel good today. My toes are still a little bit sore. My feet are super, super sore. I have blisters all at the back. Honestly blown away by this place. The fact that we've just been invited into Ram's family's home. His name is Danny. <laughs> Feeling okay? <laughs> That's Shaju. <laughs> we really feel as though we've become part of the family. And uh, this little guy is absolutely adorable. Feeling pretty tired every day. You have like maybe three hours where you really have to push yourself. Yeah, I'm just really, really positive at the moment and feel really excited to carry on with the rest of the trip. Very nice to stay with my family and my clients also enjoy to hear them first. I hope we are doing well after the next trek. Thank you. Okay, so day number three of the trek. We are leaving Ram's hometown and we are heading up the mountains. We have five hours of continuous climbing. Uh, we are climbing a peak called Jabra. And I think we are staying near the top and then tomorrow we go back. Is it back down or? Up, 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 just, just up. <laughs> so in a couple of days, we are heading to Pique Peak, uh, which is at an altitude of 4,200 meters. So that will be by far the highest we have climbed so far. Let's see if our, uh, our legs can cope. So we've just come from those houses over there, Ram's parents' house. And we've come all the way down to the river and come all the way back up again to our resting point. And we're just going to drop some buffalo milk off at uh, one of Ram's relatives' houses. <laughs> yeah, we <we're> go there. <laughs> okay. So the lady here actually has the most random thing ever. Popcorn. <laughs> mm. So we've already stopped off at another house and had tea and popcorn. Every single house that we stop at here in Nepal wants to feed us. And we have discovered very quickly that the word no or pugya, meaning I'm full, means absolutely nothing. <laughs> they will insist on you having more and more and more. <sighs> and it becomes difficult to walk up hills because now I weigh about three stone more. So yesterday we actually took the day off from trekking and we didn't really film, we just spent the day um, kind of experiencing the local life here and uh, we met a lot of people, a lot of uh, Ram's relatives and we started off just down behind this peak is Ram's house and then we came here and then we went all the way up to here and we had some drinks and we went to this house here and we had lunch and we did a bit of farming here and then we met, met an ex Gorka British soldier in this house here. So just in one day we actually got to see a lot of the valley um, and considering we weren't meant to be trekking we did a lot of walking yesterday to see some of the houses. So the young boy that we were staying with in Ram's parents home, Shazu, he actually walks from grandparents house all the way down all the way back up to this white building over here. <laughs> How long do you think that takes him? Yeah, an hour. An hour. An for hour yeah. for a Nepali walking. <laughs> How long would it take us? Take us about three days. <laughs> It's all uphill from here, unfortunately. And when he says uphill, he means uphill. Like, almost vertical sometimes. 
Luckily he stops like every 20 minutes or so, like maybe for 30 seconds just to catch your breath a little bit. But we've still got probably about another hour and a half climb and then maybe another hour before we reach our final destination. So not too far. We've left the road now for today and we are on a trekking path. We've already bumped into two people, two locals on the path. Very nice, very nice to say hello. And uh, yeah, nice little path, isn't it, Leanne? Nice path. It's especially nice because a lot of it is downhill for the first time all day and uh, it's nice on the legs. We've arrived three hours. Three and a half. Three and a half hours. We are basically in Nepali now. <laughs> So this is the first like touristy tea house that we have stayed in so far. This is more like most of the accommodations we will be staying in once we reach like the height of Lukla and Namche Bazaar. And uh, yeah, it's quite cute, quite cozy. Yeah. We have like a nice fire in the middle, night, yeah. yeah, to keep us warm in the night because we're now at around 2,500 meters. So it's a lot cooler here than it was lower down, about 15 degrees. And then it will drop lower in the nighttime as well. So a lot cooler. Quick room tour. We've arrived. This is the room. Uh, the room costs 500 Nepali rupees per night. These are the beds, table, window, and electric. We have electric here so we can charge everything. We have so much to charge. Um, the beds are actually really comfortable. Nice fresh bedding, really nice soft pillows, really good pillow. Um, you really appreciate things more here. When you get something really nice, it's like, oh yeah, feel good. Um, they're making us some noodle and egg soup downstairs for lunch. Um, I'm definitely freezing here, so I'm gonna have to go and get a jacket, but we'll catch you for lunch. So the lady here has just made us some egg, noodle and vegetable soup. I've put a little bit of the pepper inside, but there's also some, um, Pickled chili for Andrew and Ram because they like spicy. Uh, let's try. Mmm. Mitucha. Mitucha? Mitucha. Okay, enjoy. Okay. They brought these pigs on the back of a motorbike in two baskets. They've come all the way from Okaldunga, so quite far on the back of a motorbike. Um, they seem a lot happier in here. Day three of the trek is done. So today's trek was super easy actually. Hey everyone, namaste. We're doing very well. Yeah, not too bad. We were a little bit worried about today. Ram told us that it was all uphill, so we kind of built ourselves up for this really, really difficult day. It was supposed to take us five hours continuously uphill. Um, it actually ended up taking us two and a half hours, minus the break. Yeah, still feel really good. We've arrived at this really, really nice tea house. The mattresses are so much comfier than the mattresses we've been sleeping on for the past, like the past four days. The blisters on my feet are still really, really sore. One of the plasters has completely come off. The other one is clinging on for dear life. It's a little bit cooler than it has been down in the mountains, but he's about to light a fire and hopefully that will warm us up. But Feeling really, really good. It is definitely more cold here. <laughs> um, so we're all wrapped up, but when you get walking, you warm up. So anyway. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I feel really good. Feel really good. Still no no major aches and pains. And overall, just still feel really, really positive and ready for the rest of the trek. Today was very nice. Bit climbing up, but it is good. Nice walk, then nice to see villages and lots of flowers. Lovely day. Thank you. Day four of the trek is starting. We are leaving our amazing tea house here in Jabre and we are making our way up to Picky Peak Base Camp. We are 2,500 meters roughly in elevation and we are making our way up to around 3,800. So we have 1,300 meters of elevation climb today. 
yeah, we're spending the night at 3,800, and tomorrow we get up super early to climb to Picky Peak, which is 4,200 meters in elevation. Wish us luck. Also, it is really, really misty up here today. I mean, we can barely see any of the hilltops around us. We can see maybe 50 meters ahead. So we probably won't get a good view of Picky Peak today. It's a nice temperature, not too hot. So this next to me is one of the monasteries here up in the hills. It's closed at the moment, but um, you can still walk around it clockwise. These are the prayer wheels here. And the idea is you go around and you touch each one. For good luck. And then just before she does it, look at the size of this prayer wheel. It is the biggest one we have seen so far. We've just stopped for a quick water break and uh, as you can see the clouds are rolling in and uh, I think very soon the visibility will be very, very limited. <laughs> How are you feeling Leanne? Sweaty. How are you feeling Ram? I'm good, just a bit sweaty. <laughs> we've just caught our first glimpse of our first yaks here in Nepal. So far we've seen oxes and cows but we've not seen any yaks. Three, three, seven, two meters, not bad. Another 500 meters before we reach our end destination. That's pretty good actually. I'm surprised how high we've climbed in such a short amount of time. Yak attack, yak attack. Yak attack. Yak attack. We've arrived in Bubule. It's just this building here. Hopefully they're open or we might have to keep going. <laughs> Welcome to Bubule, our second tea house so far on the trek. And uh, is the fire on? No, the fire's cold. We're gonna have a cup of coffee. We're still not very hungry, so maybe something small to eat. And uh, then we'll be back on our way to Peaky Peak Base Camp. But let me give you a really, really quick Nepalese bathroom tour. This is a pretty standard Nepalese toilet up in the countryside. And I'll just show you inside. So you have your squatty toilet where you do your business. This is for any paper. And then this is how you flush the toilet. You get a jug. And you pour it down. And that's it. That is a Nepalese toilet. You get used to them really quick. Have about another three and a half, four hours, maybe, to our final location, Peaky Peak Base Camp. Feeling good so far. A bit colder here, definitely. I'm actually trekking in my jacket now but I'll probably get warm in a minute and I have to take it off. Yak attack. We've just been offered a cup of the fresh, hot knack milk. Um, most people would call it yak milk, but a funny story, Rams just told us that yaks are actually the male name for the male yaks and knack is the female. Don't get it wrong because you don't want to be drinking yak milk. <laughs> Delicious by the way, super creamy, really fresh tasting. Um, Ram was saying that the knacks here eat a lot of like the natural grasses and the medicines and things and then that comes through into the milk. So a lot of people drink it here and it gives you lots of energy, um, but it's really delicious. Mitucha. Also, it is really cold up here. Uh, we are about 3,500 meters and uh, you can see the steam on your breath. So cold. So I don't know if you can see in the distance, but we finally caught our first glimpse of Peaky Peak Base Camp, which means that we are 3,800 meters above sea level. 
This is the highest that either of us have ever trekked before. As I say, it's much colder. I've actually got condensation or had condensation on my hair. A little bit out of breath, but feeling good. Can't wait to stop and have something to eat because I'm starving. It'll be nice to just rest the legs after maybe six and a half hours of walking today. Feeling good. So the other day in one of Ram's family's home, we tried a drink called Tongba, which is like a home-brewed alcohol. I'll put a quick clip of Leanne trying the Tongba in, in now. <laughs> but this yellow drum here is full of Tongba. That's a lot of Tongba. <laughs> So we've stopped off in our tea house here and we're having a lovely bowl of noodle soup. I'm actually now on my second bowl because it is absolutely delicious. I have loaded it full of this chili sauce, which is just nice. And Leanne is absolutely addicted to this. Wild pepper. It's got like a we call really it strong... Timul. Timul? Timul, yes. Timul. Um, it makes your mouth like tingly, a bit numb, cold, a bit like menthol. It's so good, but you need like a drip of it. It's such a small amount. So delicious. So, day four complete. So, day four. Today we made it up to Peaky Peak Base Camp. Um, pretty good day. Um, little bit long. I think like six hours or five hours or something. Once again, pretty uneventful day. Um, still feeling really strong, even though we have made it up to three thousand eight hundred meters. It was a lot, lot colder up at Peaky Base Camp. Um, you could definitely feel it in the wind. And uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty excited. I feel, I feel good. Feel strong. Feel ready. But yeah, excited to get over four thousand meters, and a little bit nervous as well. Apparently, that's where you can start to feel a little bit of altitude sickness. Looking forward to it. Excited and ready to go. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to the summit of Peaky Peak. This is our first true Nepali mountain. We are. Woo! about 4,200 meters up. Hey, yes, yeah. <laughs> Mountain. <laughs> Mountains, yeah. We made it in record time. We left base camp at 5 a.m. and we actually arrived at 5.55. So we made it here in less than an hour. Yeah. We are the first people this morning at the summit. Um, we didn't film our way up because it was pitch black. It was raining. We kept the camera in the bag. Peaky peak. peak! We made it! Yeah. <laughs> snow, look! Yeah. Look! Look at this! Look! Oh, oh, it's deeper than I thought. <laughs> look! Look! Snow! This is the first snow of the trip and I absolutely love snow. Look at all the prayer flags. Yeah. Oh, so good luck guys! We make it here! It's not super clear so we can't see the rest of the Himalayas. But we have some mountains in the distance. With the clouds rolling over, it's a beautiful morning. After that, we're gonna be walking down that's the valley. So that's the plan. Going down, stopping for breakfast, following the ridge, going back down, stopping at Jim Bessie, and then that's where we stay for the night. But I think it will take another seven hours. Seven hours? Yeah. Yeah, another seven hours to get down. Right, I'm gonna put the camera away. We're gonna take some pictures, put the camera away, and enjoy the views. So we've made it down Peaky Peak in absolute record time. We actually climbed to the top of Peaky Peak from base camp, made our way across the ridge, stopped for about 20 minutes, came all the way down in two and a half hours, which is super fast. Um, actually, it was so fast that when we arrived to the tea house, everybody was asleep. The door was locked. Um, Ram had to literally bang the door down to let us in. Um, 
now we're drinking Sherpa tea or salt tea and waiting for some noodle and egg soup because we are starving. We only ate, well, we actually only drank a cup of tea before the summit, so we are really hungry. The noodle soup is so delicious, so warm, nice and fresh, quite light. Perfect. We've got about five hours to go to get down to Jimbasi. And uh, I think this will just tie us over. This is Sherpa bread, freshly made. We've put some jam on top. It smells amazing. Let's have a taste. Really delicious. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. It's soft in the middle, a little bit, little bit crispy on the outside. Oh, it's so nice. What is that like? It's just like fresh baked bread with jam. Delicious. Me too, jam. <laughs> so we've just left Bangjang. And uh, we have a new companion. It's, uh, this dog is following us. Really friendly. And we're eating knack cheese. Really unusual. It's hard, you can't really chew it. You just kind of suck it. And uh, it doesn't have much flavor. It's just kind of a little bit musky. But yeah, different. That's where she's come from. So maybe she'll follow us all the way to Jimbasi. Who knows? So just here, just about to go behind those clouds. That's Peaky Peak. That's the mountain we climbed this morning. Almost an hour in, and she's still with us. Maybe she is coming all the way to Jumbassi. The dog's been with us so long, we've actually given her a name now. She's now called Red Girl. <laughs> well, it seems as though after an hour and a half, Red Girl's finally turned and gone back home. <laughs> She'll be missed. We haven't seen her for about 20 minutes, but she's back! <laughs> yeah, let's give her a Woo! I feel as though we'll definitely make it to uh, June Bessie now. Yuck attack. I know I joke, I know I joke and I say yak attack, but we did just legitimately get chased by a yak. <laughs> Just back up there through the bushes. It was the black one, you know the one that um, was near Red Girl? Good girl. Yeah, the, the black one that was near Red Girl. He came round and uh, yeah, chased us. <laughs> and I just nearly fell over. must now be three hours into this trek from Banjang to Jumbasi and Red Girl is still with us. She uh, she disappeared for about 20 odd minutes and we thought she was gone but no she's still there. Still going strong. We've promised ourselves that if she makes it all the way to Jumbasi with us we'll buy her a nice bowl of rice. Also the landscape here has completely changed in the past couple of hours so when we were much much higher there were hardly any trees, uh, we were up in the clouds, but now we've come down to the lower lands, we found rivers again, there's a big cattle farm just through here, and we're actually below the clouds, and it's a lot warmer too, look at this. Wow, so we've actually come 
from beyond these mountains right at the very back. We've come from up and over them. So we've made it to our final rest stop before we make our way to Jumbesi. I think sadly this will be where we say goodbye to Red Girl. I don't think she'll be waiting for us when we get back out. But let's go and have a nice cup of tea because my feet are killing me. I'm gonna put them up by a fire and all will be good with the world. So we're back on the road again after a nice cup of tea. And whilst we were sitting there drinking our tea, we got to watch Red Girl go off with another group of uh, trekkers. So it wasn't true love after all. I don't think it's too far now to Jumbesi. It does, however, look like it's about to rain. So hopefully we miss that. But I'm not so sure we will. How are you feeling, Leanne? Yeah, not too bad. Eager to get to Jumbesi. Uh, I think it's just around that hill. <laughs> Nearly there. Day five complete. Day five. Very good day from to Baiskin to Jinpesi. I'm not gonna lie, this has been the hardest day by far of all of them. Today was tough. Really, really, really tough. The weather was not really good. We expect to for the views when you get to top the Peaky Peak top, but unfortunately not with it clear. Um, we made it up to Peaky Peak, which is 4,200 meters. No issues getting up to the top. We came down from like four and a half thousand meters all the way down to like 2,600 and my knees are ruined. That was a lot more challenging. Um, by the end of the day, my right knee was was shot. Yeah, my feet have took a massive, massive beating today. Yeah, it's, it's got me a little bit more concerned about the rest of the trip. Just praying and hoping that this holds up and that we can make it for the rest of the journey without any issues. Don't want to complain too much. Um, just going to enjoy it, take my time. Yeah, see how I feel tonight. Thank you. Just woken up this morning and looked out the window and we've caught our first glimpse of one of the Himalayan mountains. Have a look. So we just bought some chocolate from that shop and the little boy was the most helpful and cute little boy we have ever seen. Ram has just found me a walking stick. Leanne has a walking stick. So now we're ready to go. Namaste, Dai. Take care. Oh, it's so this building here, that's where we slept last night. And that's where we're heading. First tea stop of the day. In about 13 days, we will be on one of those planes coming back from uh, Lukla to Kathmandu. We have never been on a small plane like that, so that will be another experience that we will remember for a long time. So we're starting to get used to crossing these big suspension bridges now. It's still very wobbly. And uh, look at this river that we're going over. Absolutely gorgeous. Kind of creepy when you look down. Very first sign to Everest Base Camp. 
quite exciting, even though it is like a full seven or eight or ten days away. Um, pretty exciting to see. Just stopped in the little town of Ringmu for what looks like the nicest bowl of egg vegetable noodle soup. I was so hungry. It smells so good. We're gonna eat it really fast. <sighs> Tastes so good. So hungry. We're just gonna throw the camera away because it's starting to rain and it's not waterproof. Uh, we'll pull it back out when it stops. So um, today was actually amazing. I felt absolutely great today. I don't know if it was the bottle of Coke that I drank or the little chocolate sweets that I ate that gave me energy or the fact that I properly dressed my blisters last night. They're feeling so much better. I took two paracetamol this morning and absolutely smashed it. I think we were supposed to get here in about seven hours and in the end we did it in just under I think so a lot quicker today felt really really good got this stick a few days ago Andrew found it and honestly it's been like a lifesaver um, who would have thought having a minging old stick would help so much but it really has helped me get up and down the hills and um, we're not that far now from Luckler maybe one or two days so that's pretty exciting uh, the fact that we're getting almost to the main tourist path, path now has got me super, super excited. Um, eager to get up there, feeling really, really fit, sleeping really well. Um, let's see how tomorrow goes. Good morning, we're here in Nuntala. This is the place where they used to meet to exchange salt. Got about another six or seven hours today. Got me stick, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so he was gonna eat us. <laughs> Look at it. So above us is the first rescue helicopter we've seen so far on the trip. As we get higher up past Lukla and towards Namchi Bazaar, we'll see a lot more of them. First one, and uh, as Leanne said, today we have a six hour walk to a town called Bupsa, and that is where we stop for tonight, because tomorrow we have a very long day. Um, tomorrow we actually reach Lukla, which is where most people start the Everest Base Camp Trek. However, we started it over a week ago, back in Okaldunga. Here we have the first donkeys of the trip. They use these donkeys to carry um, people as well as goods up the, the mountain paths. Apparently you see a lot more of them past Lukla and Namche Bazaar, but these are the first we've seen. So we are currently crossing a bridge across the Dudkoshi River. Dudkoshi means milky, so this is the Milky River, and it flows all the way from Kumbu Glacier up near Everest Base Camp. So we will be following this river right the way up for the next seven or eight days. Such a high bridge, look at this. A little bit terrifying. But yeah, this is one of the longest suspension bridges we have crossed so far. And uh, probably one of the scariest as well. Not even halfway up the climb yet, probably about a tenth of the way. Um, look at my back. Yeah. This house at the top up here, probably can't see it on camera, but as far as you can see, is where we're stopping for lunch. Yeah. All the way up there, jam jam. We started this. So 
So we've made it to our lunch stop and uh, it was a lot further than it looked. It's not lunch, this is not the place. It's down the right place. I thought we were finished. Today is the first day we have dropped below 2,000 meters and uh, it is a lot hotter. I'd kind of gotten used to the temperature at about 2,800, 3,000 meters. So this is, uh, this is harder. So we've made it to our stopping place for lunch. That last climb was an absolute killer. Um, it wasn't that difficult of a climb. It was just so hot. I am literally drenched through with sweat. You can see from the other window, uh, Bupsa, which is where we are stopping for the night. He says it's about a two hour walk because we have to, it doesn't look that far from the valley, but we have to walk all the way around. But uh, yeah, still feeling okay. I think once I've cooled down and had a bit of a wash, I'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. Okay, lunch finished, <laughs> feeling refueled, feeling ready. Let's go. So, today was supposed to be an easy day. It's not an easy day. We're going up there. <laughs> Good morning, today we are leaving Bupsa and the plan is to try and make it to Lukla. It will take roughly eight hours. We are currently at 2,300 meters and we are trying to make it to 2,800 meters. So a climb of 500 meters in elevation. But before we do that, we have to make a climb, then walk a pass, then we drop right down and then climb right back up again. So it's not just a simple walk. Our second mountain, just here, looks like a cloud. It's not, that's a mountain. So we've made it about 25 minutes up the side of this hill. It's all been uphill. We get to this little house just where Ram's gonna take off his jacket. And the people in the house come running out saying, um, you've left your power bank back down in the hotel. So poor Ram left his power bank. And the girl from the hotel has called the next house up, told them, and he's gone legging it back. So he's told us to keep going. Hopefully we don't get lost. Um, and he's gonna catch us up. Loads of donkeys, look. So poor Ram still hasn't caught us up. We did see him coming up the road, but it's been quite uphill from there. So, um, Hopefully they'll catch us up soon. Hope we're going the right way. Yeah, we'll just take it nice and slow. We won't deviate off the path, so make sure we stay on the main path. And um, if we feel like we're lost, we'll just stop and wait for him. Super be Henny! <laughs> Here he comes! This is where we find out we've gone the wrong way for the past hour. <laughs> Picture! All good! All good! We've gone... Have we gone the right way? Yeah! Oh. Water, water. Well done! <laughs> <laughs> so we've made it to the top for the first part of the climb. Two hours, two and a half hours directly up. We're now having a little short start for some Sherpa tea, which is like a salt tea. And then I think we've got about three or four hours of probably slight incline. And then we go all the way down for about an hour and then climb all the way up to Lukla for about another two hours. There's Andrew and Rav. Let me stay here. How do you feel? I'm good, just try to drink shepherd tea. Shepherd tea? Egg gum teacher. Let's go see the donkeys. <laughs> There's all the donkeys, they're just having a bit of a break. Some of them are rolling in the mud, which is kind of cute. Can't be comfortable though, they've still got the saddles on, but you know, you gotta take a roll when you can. Carrying all the rice and everything. Thank you donkeys for all the food you bring up to Namche.
Namaste. We've descended all the way down to the small town of Shirke by the river, down about two hours. And now we have a two to two and a half hour full climb up to Lukla. You can't even see it because it's so vertical, but it's basically like up there. Also, it's a really, really steep climb and it looks like it's about to rain. So I'm going to pack the camera away and we'll see you up at Lukla. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Nepal. We are here in Lukla still. I gave my stick yesterday. I had like a big bamboo stick for trekking and I gave it to a doctor who had injured his knee. And um, the hotel we stayed at last night were nice enough to give me a proper trekking pole and Leanne. <laughs> so I think today is only five hours, much, much easier than yesterday. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a nice easy day. Look at the size of this wheel. We need all the good luck we can get. So these behind us aren't actually yaks. They are called jokyo, which are a cross between a yak and a cow. We've seen a lot more of these than we've seen actual yaks. Um, but as we get further and further up the mountains, we'll see more and more yaks. This is the Pasang Lamu Gate. And the lady that you can see on both sides was actually the first Nepali woman to climb Mount Everest. This is probably the tallest bridge we've crossed so far. I'll, uh, I'll try and point down now. Yeah, that was probably the scariest bridge we've crossed so far. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be back above ground. Time for a cup of tea. Really nice gate. Namaste, baby. Tea break done, and now we're back on the path. So I have the job of showing you guys this wonderful restaurant here in Farding. It's one of the first stops after Lukla and we got here in about two and a half hours and our last destination is about an hour and a half away. So we're just going to get something really quick here for lunch, maybe some soup and then carry on and we'll get to our last destination in good time, before two o'clock probably. Things have started to get a little bit strange here up in the hills. We all washed our clothes and left them outside, but it's so cold up in the hills that things just do not dry. So we came up with a solution. We decided to light a fire and place the clothes around the fire in chairs. 
But then the fire started to leak smoke from the top. So Ram came up with an idea of sealing the top of the fire with bread dough. And it's working. <laughs> so now the room smells like freshly baked bread and the clothes seem to be drying. It's working. Also, we made a new friend. This is Bart, Bart from the Netherlands. Hello, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Fun night, sitting around a fire with wet clothes and Dalbat. Good morning from Benkar. Yesterday was day nine of the hike. Hey, everyone's good morning. We had to make it from Lukla to here. It's supposed to be around about five and a half hours, five hours, but we did it in four, four and a half. Yeah, nice walk and easy walk for the today. Then we make it like a banker. After that, we're gonna rest. Hopefully gonna be tomorrow's beautiful day. Felt great, absolutely great. So really smashing it now, feeling super fit. This morning we've woken up and you can see this beautiful mountain behind us. We've met a friend, a man from the Netherlands. Um, really nice guy. Might be hiking up to Namche with him. But yeah, beautiful morning. Really, really nice, quite clear. And we're just hoping that it stays like this for the rest of the day. And today we should actually catch our first glimpse of Everest if, uh, if it stays clear. On our way to Namche. So we're getting so used to crossing these bridges now, but even so, they are absolutely gorgeous. When you look down over the rivers, and this river's quite, quite violent today. I'll show you now, one second. What a difference a day can make with the weather. We haven't seen anything like this for nine days, and all of a sudden it's all on show this morning. So we have now entered Sagramatha National Park, which is where we will start our slow ascent up to Everest Base Camp. Just to let you know, there are two um, fees that you have to pay to enter the National Park. The first one is from Lukla, and you have to pay the municipality fee, which is 2,000 Nepali rupees. And the second one is the National Park fee, which is 3,000 Nepali rupees. So in total, to make it up to Everest Base Camp, you have to pay 5,000 in fees. quick tea break for our big big climb up to Namche. This is the small town of Josile and we're gonna have a Snickers and a cup of tea. Along the track we've been trying to teach Ram some Scouse slang. All right Kira, all right lad. <laughs> so we are just about to cross another suspension bridge. This one is the highest suspension bridge I think we climb throughout the whole trip. There are actually two bridges here. There's one below which is the old bridge and then there's this one which is the new bridge. The old bridge you used to have to walk down the path, cross and then walk back up. But so they made the second one which is higher and much easier for the trek. As you can see, this bridge is massive. There's the old bridge and all the way down there is the river. So yeah, this bridge is super high. Let's try not to look down too much. Made it to Namche. Not too bad today. Namche. The hike up to Namche is done. I was a bit worried about today, to be honest, because he said it was a lot of uphill, and it was a lot of uphill. But um, felt really strong again. Felt, had loads of energy. My legs did actually feel a little bit weak coming up uh, for a short period. Wasn't sure why that was. I'm not sure if it was just because they were fatigued. Um, don't think it was altitude because we slept at higher than this and had no issues whatsoever. Weather's been pretty good. It was quite sunny, so it was quite hot. It was a lot of uphill. We were actually given a set of hiking sticks before we left Lukla and they've really, really helped. 
I'm looking forward to exploring Namche. Um, we do get a rest day as well at Namche, so, well, a rest day. Um, we actually have to hike like 400 meters or something for acclimatization. But I'm um, feeling pretty good, pretty strong. Hopefully we sleep well. Good morning everybody and welcome to Namcha Bazaar. I have just woken up, just washed my hair, looked out the window and this is the view that has greeted me this morning. I've definitely woken up to worse views in my life. The city is pretty sleepy this morning. Um, it's a beautiful clear day. You can see all the mountains. The sun is just coming up behind one of the big ones over that way. And today we've got a acclimatization day. So it's a pretty easy day, no backpacks, around about three to five hours and then back for some lunch and dinner. There is a museum that we are heading to first with a viewpoint of Mount Everest. And then we are heading to the Everest View Hotel, hopefully to get another view of Everest. Yeah, then we're just kind of walking around for a few hours. So behind this statue here of Tenzing Sherpa, you can see just in the distance, not so clearly, but just in the distance, there's a pointy mountain to the right, a black mountain to the left, and in between is Everest. This one. We are surrounded on all sides by mountains. I'm gonna give you a quick uh, like 360 panorama just so you can see, but this is incredible. <laughs> Quick water break. I don't think we're too far off the top now. Views are great. A bit out of breath. <laughs> this is Namcha Bazaar. This is where we started this morning. And um, we started in one of these hotels here. So just before we've reached the Everest View Hotel, the clouds have rolled in. These clouds have been following us for the past eight days. But it's so strange. There were mountains all around us literally five minutes ago, and now there are none. So we're here at the Everest Hotel, which is one of the premium hotels here in Nepal. Um, it's a beautiful, clear, sunny day, and hopefully here is Everest. <laughs> um, there's lots of people here now taking photos. Um, it's all clearing up, and it's been a great day. Now we're going back down for food, because we're starving. Really quick um, confession cam for today. Yeah, climatization day done. We made it to the Everest View Hotel. We actually got really good views of Everest today from the Everest View Hotel. The views to Everest were absolutely stunning. We were worried on the way up because the clouds rolled in and you couldn't see any mountains at all. It was about a five hour trek that we did in about two and a half hours. So I think we are pretty strong now. But yeah, great day today. Can't wait for tomorrow. Got a short like five hour hike tomorrow, same altitude. Looking forward to that. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Good morning from Namche. Today we leave to go to Tembuche. Slightly higher, 3,800 meters. Nice sunny day. See the mountain and the monastery. Jam jam, let's go. <laughs> so we were lucky yesterday. Everest, Loche and Amadabla are all hiding behind the clouds this morning. There's still a couple of mountains up there in the haze. Still, nice clear day. I think we still have maybe four and a half hours and we should get to Tenguche.
This mountain here, Loche, doesn't get anywhere near as much love as it deserves. It's the fifth tallest mountain in the world, and from here we get such an incredible view of it. This mountain next to it, that is Amadablan. A lot shorter, but the Nepali people call it the sexy mountain. <laughs> so we just stopped for a quick cup of tea. We just met up with Bart, our friend from the Netherlands again. Passing ships in the night, every time we stop for tea, he will uh, meet us just as we're leaving. Uh, hopefully, he will be staying in the same lodge as us in Tengboche, so we can play a few games of cards. Lunch is done. Look, we met back up with Bart. <laughs> 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 so we're all going back up to Tembuche together. Yes. So the uphill stretch from Pongitanga up to Tengbuche is no joke. Quite steep. So we're just taking our time, going slow. We'll make it. <laughs> So we have finally made it to Tenguche. We had to climb around 557 meters from our lunch point, and I felt every single one of them. Well done. Well done. Well done. This is Tenguche. And this is where we stopped for the night. There's strength. So. The guest house we wanted to stay at in Tengbuche was full. So we have to walk another half hour down the hill to find somewhere else. So we've arrived at our second location. Um, Tengbuche was full. So we've come to Debuche, about 25 minutes down the road. And you can see Everest from our door. So we've arrived at Paradise Lodge. We're staying in this room. Room 25, we've already had a big jug of ginger, honey and lemon tea. We've had some fried rice and now we're going to a monastery. So lucky. So we've actually just been inside of this monastery and the decorations inside were so beautiful, like really, really nice. Probably nicer than most of the other temples that I've been in. There was like a big um, skin drum and like so many paintings in the back wall. It was almost like a built-in shelving unit and it was full of what looked like really, really old like books. Really, really pretty place. Really glad we got to go inside. So nice. So, confession cam for getting to Tenbuche or um, Debuche. We made it to Tenbuche. Tenbuche was fully booked, and so we had to go further on um, to Debuche. Quite a short day. Lots and lots and lots of climbing, pretty much all day. We actually ended up climbing up to 3,800 meters and then dropping back down to 3,600. I think everybody feels really good got some really high altitude days coming up in the next few days so a bit nervous about that. One of the beautiful day we walked and from the Napti to Tengpoche I would say like six hours but we make it like five hours that's uh, 
one of the We Are Fitness group. We must have climbed around 600 meters yesterday and my legs felt every single one of them. I'm not gonna lie, at one point I did struggle. Still hopeful that we'll make it to base camp on time. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping everybody else is enjoying the trip as much as I am. Yeah, yeah. that's good, thank you. Good morning from the tiny little town of Debuche. We slept here last night because Tengbuche was full. Uh, we have an absolutely beautiful morning. The views from all the way around us are stunning. And uh, over off in the distance, we can even see Everest and Loche this morning. Really, really nice. Today is a very, very, very special day. We haven't reached base camp yet, don't worry, but <laughs> it's Ram's birthday. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's my special day today. Special day. He's already had a bit yeah. of a cake. Everybody wish him a happy birthday in the comments. Um, he kept it quiet from us. We only found out this morning. Um, so happy birthday, Ram. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Also, we haven't mentioned yet, but these things are called manuals, like sacred rocks with prayers written on them. The correct way to go around these is to always go around clockwise. It's bad luck if you go around counterclockwise, so you always want to go around this way. Same with anything like a, a stupa or a temple, always go around it clockwise. If you're spinning the prayer wheels, you always want to try and get an odd number of dings from the bells. So hopefully I'm pointing to Everest, probably the clearest view we've ever had of it, and the one next to it is Loche. Everest is obviously the highest in the world and Loche is the fifth highest in the world. We've stopped for our first tea break of the day. Um, where are we? Pangboche. Um, this is a popular place, obviously. There's lots of people around us. I'm gonna get some salt tea, try and replace some electrolytes. Andrew's gone for milk coffee. Um, feeling pretty tired, to be honest, today. I'm not sure what's going on. Probably the last 14 days have caught up with me, finally. Um, it's really warm, a lot warmer than I thought it would be. The crazy thing is, we're actually only a 12 hour walk away from Everest Base Camp. But the issue we have is, we need to stop for at least one day in Dingbuche to acclimatize to the altitude, to then push on to Le Buche, and then finally East EPC. Wow. Wow. So this manual here is in memory of all the Sherpa people. Look at the backdrop. It's just unbelievable. Wow. So since the other day, the helicopters have been pretty much non-stop. We have seen so many since Lukla. Wow. So we have now had our final views of Everest for the next couple of days. We'll get another glimpse just before base camp, but then the best views of all will come when we reach Kalapata. But there, she's disappeared behind the ridge, behind Loche. We're about to stop for lunch because we are absolutely starving. Boglagio. Whew. So this is where we are stopping for lunch. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the mountains. With views of Loche. Views 
of Amandabla. Wow, this this is what I was expecting when uh, when I signed up to do, to walk to Everest Base Camp. So for the past hour, we've been walking with this yak herder and uh, at some point he's dropped behind and we've herded the yaks. So we are now technically Nepali yak herders. So, so far in Nepal, I've plowed a field with an ox. And I have herded yaks through the Himalayas. Not a career path I thought I'd see myself taking, but hey, I'm not mad. So we've made it to Dingbuche, right there. There's a helicopter landing. Our yak herder friend is down there. Feeling really good, really strong, a bit tired. Jam, jam, let's go. morning from a very very cold Dingbuche. It is minus two degrees Celsius at the moment. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. I'll put it down below. We just have a small walk today, maybe three hours, but we are reaching our new highest altitude of 4,700 meters. This is an acclimatization day uh, and then tomorrow we head on to Labuche, which has lows of minus six. But hey ho. Something I find really amazing is that the fifth largest mountain in the world, Loche, is just there, and yet we can't see it because of the clouds. Yesterday we had like beautiful blue skies and we saw mountains all around us, and this morning, we can't see a thing. So we're above the tree line now. We're not really struggling to breathe, but we found that if you don't concentrate on your breathing and you forget to take a breath every now and then, you notice it and you're like immediately out of breath afterwards. So it's definitely, definitely noticeable, the altitude, um, but still loving it. for a second that last one wasn't going to make it. This mountain here, this one here, that is Loche, the fifth tallest mountain in the world. This ridge is called Noche, and just on the other side of Noche is Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. Just having a cup of tea beneath the world's fifth biggest mountain. No biggie. We are so much faster going down. It's unreal. Here, have a look at Leanne. She's practically running. So, we both really need to have a wash and you can get a shower here, but they charge 500 rupees each for hot water. And we're not sure if we've got enough money to get up to base camp and back down to Namche. So I'm gonna go and get a cold bucket wash. Wish me luck.
So after a cold water wash, the only way to heat up is with a fire. And as there's no wood up here, they use yak poop. They basically gather the poop from the fields and then they flatten it into pancakes and dry it on either the walls or the grass. And then they keep it in a pile and burn it. Yes, yeah, so every single time we see a pile of dried yak poop, we actually get really excited because we know there's gonna be a fire that's gonna keep us warm. Okay, so getting to Big Buche. Okay, so day... I honestly can't even remember what day it is. Hey, yeah, we got to here, Ding Buche. And nice to easy day for the today, like the uh, acclimatizers and... Pretty easy. Can definitely tell that the air is a little bit thinner up here. Once again, no issues with my legs. Felt really, really strong on the way up. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Beginning of the day, had a bit of chest pain but I think it was mainly just anxiety about going higher and higher. I'm not struggling to breathe, but if I forget to take a breath, sometimes I find myself out of breath afterwards. Looking forward to the next step. Should be in base camp in the next day or two. Hopefully we keep going strong. Thank you. Morning, we are off to La Buche today. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. There are Himalayas all around us. You can see Amadablam, you can see just everything. Just, just look at everything, it's beautiful. This town below us um, completely closes in June, July for 45 days and the local people believe that you shouldn't go inside any of the houses, animals aren't allowed inside the houses, it's completely, completely closed and they do this because they believe that it's good luck, so it's very, very strict here. Some people will camp up on the hillside just to keep a watch on things, but yeah, a lot of uh, good luck beliefs in Nepal. Also, we have just come across our first glacier, just over there, that big mound of rocks running down to the water, that is a glacier. So all the way along this path, it smells absolutely beautiful. And it's because of this plant here, so this plant is natural incense and it smells amazing. Mm. It smells like a cross between cinnamon and pickled chilies, funnily enough. They collect it during festivals so that they can burn it for good luck. And uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful. This entire, this entire like mountainside is covered in the stuff. We've just stopped at this lovely little place and we have bought the biggest slice of apple pie. He's heated it up and we're all gonna share it. We've also got some nice sugary milk tea and Andrew's got a milk coffee. I cannot wait to eat this. I am actually quite hungry. It's um, really, really tasty, really crumbly. And I'm gonna devour the whole thing in like five seconds. So we just made it to the top of the Tukla Pass. This place is really, really special. There are lots of like memorials built around here and they're surrounded by all the Himalayas. Um, it's not just people who have passed away on Everest. Um, it's basically anybody from any country who's passed away on any mountain in this area. We've got people from Bangladesh, Japan, China, people who have died in terrorist attacks and they're all together here in this really special place surrounded by the Himalayas, which they obviously loved so much. So what an unreal day. Here I am just sitting at the top of Tukla Pass, eating popcorn, surrounded by the Himalayas, with what has to be some of the best views I've ever seen in my life. 
honestly so special we are so blessed <laughs> so we've just come over the hill after Tukla Pass and we've made it to Lubuche base camp so this is the first base camp we have seen with tents obviously we made it to Peaky Peak base camp but that was much lower and there were like tea houses there this is the first true camping base camp ready for Lubuche which is unfortunately behind the clouds so you can't see it at the moment So, this is the small village of Labuche. We are surrounded by the Himalayas, um, but we're going 30 minutes more just to go to our final resting place. That sounded really bad. To go to a place of rest. No, that's not any better. To go to our hotel. To go to our hotel. I completely understand why people in Nepal get cold showers now. These views, these views should be X-rated. So the little triangle hut thing you can see there, that's where we're sleeping tonight. So the lodge we're staying at is called the 8000 Inn. Now, this behind us is actually the research facility. This is, funnily enough, where we are sleeping tonight. It's one-way glass, so nobody can see in, but we can see out. Up on this hill is an automatic weather station, which records the weather every two hours, and it has done since the 1990s. And we didn't know that we were staying here tonight, but our guide, Ram, is friends with the person who owns the hotel, and he hooked us up. Anyway, let's go back inside, away from the snow. So obviously in this room, we can't show everything in detail because it is still a working uh, research facility. We can give you like a brief look around, but we can't show any of the paperwork that has any like super important details on it and stuff. But seriously, this place is crazy. It feels like we're in the Dharma Initiative uh, from an episode of Lost. It's just, it's one of the most surreal places I've ever stayed in my life. What about you, Leanne? They're doing research on like global warming and glaciers and the weather and species found in glaciers. It's quite an important little research centre. So I feel really pri privileged to stay here. So there is so much cool stuff in this room. For example, this bag in front of us is actually like an emergency uh, pressure chamber. So if somebody is suffering from severe altitude sickness, they'll be placed in this bag and they'll pump it up to a pressure below sea level and leave them in there until a helicopter can take them back to the hospital. So we've been relaxing in our little laboratory for about five minutes and uh, in that time this has happened. I love snow so much you have no idea. <laughs> Okay, so, not 100% sure what number day we're on. Not sure what day it is today. Dingbuche up to Labuche. Today was probably my best day. I've been saving my music for a particularly hard day or a day at altitude, and it really got me through. Cannot believe how lucky we are, the fact that we got to sleep inside of the facility. It was completely unexpected and a real, real highlight. Five or six hours felt like three. I actually didn't want to stop walking. I felt really, really good. The day felt really good. Uh, still not having any real symptoms of altitude sickness. Very close to base camp. Looking forward to tomorrow for base camp. Can't believe it's finally here. Still a little bit nervous to go any higher than 5,000. Tomorrow, we are making our push for Everest base camp and so excited cannot believe it's come around so quickly and yeah ready to go nice work let's go guys
So yesterday, when we arrived, it was snowing and we couldn't see Le Bouche Peak. But there she is, in all of her glory, sitting right on top of Le Bouche Glacier, which you can't really see at the moment because of the mist. But today, today is the day we make it to Everest Base Camp. We have three hours from here to Gorokshep. Then we drop our bags off and then three hours from Gorokshep to Everest Base Camp. And I cannot wait. Oh my God, what a beautiful morning. Um, Ram's put us to the test already this morning, making us climb a hill in the ice with no crampons. <laughs> So that was probably the hardest thing I have done in like 20 days. Probably in my life actually. It was both terrifying and exciting climbing up that ice hill um, in these rented boots with absolutely zero grip. Just off in the distance, if you follow this big patch of snow down, there is like a white patch of ice on the bottom. That's actually Kumbu Glacier. And if you follow that ice right to the very tip, there is a small patch of yellow tents. You definitely won't be able to see them on camera now, but that is Everest Base Camp. That is our first glimpse of Everest Base Camp. We will be there later today, so we will have some better shots for you later. Oi. So, to get to Gorokshep, which is where we are dropping our bags, we actually have to cross this. This is actually the Kumbu Glacier, it's just covered in bits of rock. Further down towards base camp, it's actually a lot clearer and looks, just looks like ice. But yeah, this is the first time in my life I will be crossing a glacier. Apparently it's safe though. So we finally, finally made it up to Gorokshep at a height of 5,190 meters. Highest place we sleep on the entire trip. We're just stopping for some lunch before we check into our room, throw our bags on the bed, and then we make our push for Everest Base Camp. Apparently it'll take us about three hours, but first we're gonna enjoy some food because we're not gonna get a chance to eat for another six hours. So I've gone for something fairly light. I've gone for the veggie steam momos, which look delicious. Mm. So good. My sense of taste isn't as strong up here as it is back in the lowlands, but even so, the can, it's kind of like curried vegetables inside of like a steamed pastry. So, so good. So this is it. <clears throat> we have been fed. We have sat down, had a cup of tea, a coffee, and relaxed. And now comes our final push to Everest Base Camp. Hello. We are exciting to see go to Apple Space Camp. It's not real. Back at the base camp. Oh. Hold on, guys. Oh my god. So, after 18 days, me, Leanne, and Ram we have all it. made it here to Everest Base Camp. So, after years and years of wanting to do this, I have finally made it to base camp. This has been a bucket list item of mine for about three or four years, ever since I watched Cara and Nate do this journey, it's, it's been something that I've really wanted to do. And I cannot believe that I'm finally here, standing at this spot. I feel so accomplished, it's unreal. It's kind of surreal to be honest. Uh, it doesn't feel real, like we're actually here after so long. Um, it's not been easy. <laughs> 
It's been a long, long way from Okaldunga. But Ram made it possible. Yeah, well done, guys. Ram. Well done, everyone. Right. Most importantly, Snickers. <gasps> Ram, oh, it's Snickers, Snickers, and Snickers at 5,364 oh, meters. It's going to be the best Snickers of my life. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's a bit hard. It's a good day. It's a good day. Nice one. And also, Lee, before I forget, this one's for you. This one's coming back to the UK for you, Lee. So this is Base Camp Mum, and this is the rock me and Ram have picked for you. Looks like a mountain, nice and shiny. Hopefully I see you in July and we can exchange it. From base camp for you, mum. That was absolutely amazing, um, but it's getting really cold now. We'll see you back in Garoksha. Good morning, guys, from the top of Kalapata. This is the highest point we reach in the entire trip. We are currently at 5,550 meters. It's just me and Ram this morning. Leanne, unfortunately, had a headache, so she decided to skip this one. But uh, we made it in... We made it in an hour and a quarter. So feeling good. How are you feeling, Ram? I'm good. Thank good. You. Oh, well done, guys. We made it. Good morning again from Gerokship. It's actually the next day. We um, we didn't film anything last night after the whole base camp trek. We would, we'd end up we'd ended up walking for like nine hours. Good morning. I am completely and utterly wrapped up. I am freezing. I can't feel my toes or my fingers. Um, yeah, we are doing very good. We make it uh, at this base camp. We are all is doing well. This morning. Me and Ram actually went and climbed Kalapata. Leanne stayed behind uh, because she had a bit of a headache. Yesterday we reached base camp. Absolutely amazing, beautiful day, really clear, but I'm definitely ready to start going down. Uh, Ram said it takes most people two and a half hours to reach the top. We got up to the top, took pictures and got back down in two hours and 15 minutes. Base camp was unbelievable. Like, I feel really accomplished. This morning was like a bit windy, but when get to talk that's much better than we all of the appears. It's been this this whole trip has just been an absolute like eye opener for me. Just seeing how people can live in such I don't want to say a hostile environment, but it can be a hostile environment has really just opened my eyes to <laughs> to what the human body can can put up with. This place has been amazing. Ram has been absolutely amazing. They both went up um, this like hike this morning at 5 a.m. I stayed in bed <laughs> um, and they got some amazing views of Everest, um, which I'm sure you'll see in the vlog. So we're gonna head back down today, but we've reached two of our main goals. So I'm really, really happy with that. Good morning guys, so last time we checked in with you, we had just made it to Everest Base Camp and me and Ram had climbed Kalapatar. This morning, we are actually back in Dukla. We didn't film our way down because it was much the same as going up and we were really, really rushing to get back down. So this morning, we actually have a flight from Tenzing Hillary Airport 
here in Lukla, the smallest airport we've ever flown out from. And Leanne is quite nervous this morning. So checking in this airport is a little bit chaotic. There's no security and there's about three or four different airlines all scrambling in the same corridor. There's no separate check-in lines. It's all just kind of a free-for-all. Definitely different from what I've experienced so far. So we have made it through security. It was tiny, just one man and a desk. We are now in the departures lounge, which is absolutely tiny. The smallest departures lounge I've ever seen. We are at the runway. If you look out the window, you can see the runway and also the small pad where all four planes will line up to park to fill up with people and then take off. There is only room for four planes to land at once in this airport. It is absolutely tiny, by far the smallest airport we have ever been to. So we've made it back to Kathmandu Airport. Leanne is feeling a little worse for wear. Not as bad as I thought it would be. We hit one patch of turbulence about halfway through the flight. And the strangest thing happened. First of all, the engines sounded as though they stopped and the plane dropped a little bit. But then after that, once we caught the air again, it was fine, no issues. Um, landing was nice and smooth. And we're back in the domestic lounge and our hotel is going to come and pick us up. Again, one. Uh -huh.